wait, are we recording? Recording. Hello and welcome to the Freakish Lemon video podcast. I am your host, the Freakish Lemon. I go by Adrian and I use masculine pronouns. Welcome to any new viewers. Thank you so much for clicking on whatever you clicked on to get here and welcome back any returning viewers. Thanks for sticking around for this thing that I do. This is a crafty type podcast coming to you from the northwest hills of modern day Connecticut, uh, ancestral homelands of the Tungsus, Pugusset, and Mohican peoples. Um, this podcast has closed captioning and there are transcripts over at the entry for this episode at my website, uh, show notes. All that stuff can be found at freakishlemon.com. Uh, we do have a group on Ravelry. Uh, just search Freakish Lemon in the Groups tab and you'll find us. And if you are interested in following me at any fun places, I am Freakish Lemon at Ravelry, Instagram, Those things, all the links to these things will be in the down bar here on YouTube or somewhere around here if you're watching this somewhere else. And if you are watching this on YouTube and you want to stick around with this thing that I do, consider hitting that subscribe button, uh, maybe even that notification bell if you want to be notified when I post new videos. Uh, I'm filming this on Saturday, February 1st, 2020, and... I just skipped recording an episode in January, didn't I? That's how time works now. Uh, and since I, since I did skip filming my episode in January, um, we've got to go over hashtag make9 2019. This is going to be a lot of talking. Feel free to fast forward until I show a thing up to the camera. Um, so my Make 9 2019 list and where I ended up with those items. Uh, number one, the Comfort Fade Cardi. I finished that. If I'm feeling fancy, I'll put photos of these finished objects here. But if not, that was just a useless gesture. Uh, number two, my Halloween button-down shirt. I did finish that. Number three, my Redford sweater. I started it. And I decided halfway through the year I was going to start doing different kinds of videos, so I didn't finish it. Uh, number four, plaid shirt number one. I That's on hold, pending my sort of self-draft draft from a shirt I already own pattern. Um, number five, the Get Weaving 001 vest for the Renaissance Fair. I did complete that. Uh, number six was plaid shirt two, again on hold pending that shirt pattern. Uh, number seven, the hand spun sweater that I did finish. Um, number eight, quilt. I worked on it. I didn't get to where I wanted to be by the end of the year, which was finished. And then when I revised my goals, it was have all of the, uh, motifs finished. Nope. Uh, and then number nine was the Star Wars Christmas sweater, which I did not start. So, hello. What are you doing? Notes. I didn't ask you to refresh. What are you doing? Okay. So that's one, two, three, four items finished. A little less than half. Uh, one... Two that I worked on but did not finish, two on hold and one not started. Not bad. Uh, that was my first year doing a make nine um, challenge. Sorry, something popped up on the tablet. I'm using a different browser on the Kindle, so trying things. Am I out of focus? No. Okay. You can tell it's been a little while since I did this. Um, so thoughts on the Make 9 2019, since it's the first Make 9 I've ever done. Um, I think it's a good number of goals to aim for over the course of a year. 
Um, it was nice to have a list of things to focus on instead of letting my brain wander where it will. Um, I feel like it would have worked better for me if I was at a point where I had cleared the previous year's whips. Um, because there were a bunch of things from 2018 that I just did not work on or ended up focusing on instead of the Make 9. Um, I'm also trying to work out how my brain breaks down tasks, and I'm not sure the Make 9 was really good in terms of that for me personally. Um, there, mm, how to phrase this? Some tasks are one item, like make a hat. Um, or especially for knit, knitting can be like a cowl is one item, uh, a hat is one item, a sweater, especially if it's a pieced sweater, is at least four items in my brain. Um, and then like the seaming is another task, so it... I, I think I needed a little more breakdown in my Make 9 and I didn't have it organized that way throughout the year. Um, like quilting, I definitely have to break down into smaller tasks. I keep looking at the wrong thing. Um, sorry, I keep looking to the side of the little view screen where my phone camera normally is, <laughs> instead of looking at the lens of this actual camera. Still getting used to it. Um, like quilting, I have to break down into smaller tasks. The the quilt top is one task. If it's a motifed quilt, like cutting out the squares is one task. Making the half square triangles is another task. Making the motifs is another task. It's it's a nice idea to get end result quilt, uh, which is what my make nine was, it was quilt, but I needed to break down the tasks into smaller chunks in order to manage my time better. Um, and sewing, the more I learn about sewing, the more it gets broken down into smaller tasks. So what I ended up doing, um, which has been helping, is I'm taking a, a page out of Costuming Drama's task breakdown. Uh, that's Costuming Drama Noel here on YouTube. Um, if I remember, I'll put a card or something to her channel. She has a giant whiteboard in her craft room uh, breaking down tasks that she wants to complete for uh, costuming. Um, she has it broken down like new business, medium business, old business, so that you're trying to finish the old stuff first, and, and it's kind of a flexible planning way to break down things into small tasks to cross off. So I did grab a whiteboard that's down in my craft room now. It's not a giant whiteboard. I don't have the space for a giant whiteboard at the moment. So it's a small one that I've got on the side of my IKEA Calyx shelf. Um, just so I have a list of things that's, that can be rearranged and then whatever I'm focusing on, I can write down the, the, the smaller broken down tasks and cross them off as I finish them. So I'm going to try that for 2020. That's not to say that I don't have goals. I certainly do. Um, I do have some projects that are deadline makes for 2020, which is a little nerve-wracking because one of those deadlines is a little over a month and or no, a little maybe a little less than a month and a half away. Uh, so for March 13th, Gabby from Once Upon a Corgi's wedding, I'm making a button-down shirt and a vest 
to wear. Uh, I have the trousers set, I have the shoes set. Um, if I find a nice suit jacket that goes with the outfit, um, second hand, I will purchase it, but I'm not counting on it because I hate shopping and I never look for things, so... But I wanted to make something um, special for uh, Gabby's wedding. Uh, if you don't know, Gabby is my sister. Um, so I'm definitely making the vest. I want to do the button-down shirt because I have the fabric, um, and I have I'm just going to use the simplicity pattern that I've used before. I already know what changes I need to make to it. There are very few changes. Um, so those things need to be done before, preferably the week of March 13th, <laughs> so that everything is ready. Um, by Rhinebeck in October, I will have completed a City Limits sweater by Samantha Guerin Designs. Uh, it will be modified uh, because of the sort of styling of that sweater is intended for feminine presenting people. Uh, I'll talk about it a little more when I get to works in progress, uh, but we decided as a house all rooming together we're all going to make one of those for a group photo at Rhinebeck this year. Uh, for Christmas I want to have that Star Wars Christmas sweater done. And by the end of the year, I want to hit at least two-thirds uh, of the Cozy Memories blanket. Um, I'd love it if it was done, but at least two-thirds. Uh, I am now tracking this blanket. I have a spreadsheet um, filling in the squares that I'm completing so that I can keep count of them because I have both the length and the width determined now and I just have to fill in the squares. Uh, other makes for 2020 that I wish to accomplish. Uh, I'd like to finish my 2019 works in progress, minus the blankets. I know finishing those blankets is not a realistic goal if I want to finish the other things, uh, but I'd love to finish the other things. Um, for my 990 AD Salazar Slytherin costume, I want to finish the shirt and the, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this anyway correctly, the braids, uh, which are undershorts. Um, I want to have the hose cast on, and I want to have the sampling I need to do completed. Uh, sampling for trim, for the fabric of the actual tunic, for any cords that I need to make, just the little things that that tend to prevent me from starting things because I need to know what I'm how much materials I need in order to get started. Um, I have a weaving project that I want to complete uh, using a gradient yarn with a hound's tooth pattern. I want to knit one hat by machine and one garment by machine, uh, one hat by hand, a one skein shawl project by hand. I want to have an additional hand knit sweater cast on, not just the city limits. Um, I have a sweater's quantity of Narnia from Once Upon a Corgi that I want to have cast on. And I want to have chosen a pattern for my brown Cormo sweater. Those are my goals. Lots of, um, honestly, just deciding things uh, is in store for 2020. I didn't ask you to refresh. Please do not do that. I'm not sure about this browser. I don't know if it's trying to refresh because... My dad's been messing with the Wi-Fi in the house, and some of my devices are not pleased that he's been messing with the Wi-Fi. Um, I don't know. It's slightly disastrous, but we will carry on. Um, so those are plans for 2020. Um, yes. 
we'll see how that goes by the end of the year. Um, I think having a list like this with some of it partial, some of it not, allows for a little more flexibility and a little more breaking down of tasks and time management, uh, which hopefully will mean I actually do the things that I'm setting out to do. We will cross our fingers and hope. On to the actual crafting for this podcast. Um, finished objects. I have some finished objects. Uh, the first finished object I'm going to show you is my uh, Nicoletta cowl. This is a pattern by Yuki HS on Ravelry. I used a US 8 uh, 5mm needle. Um, I believe this is a free pattern. My feet are falling asleep because I am sitting cross-legged on the floor. Let me shift them so that my legs don't go completely numb. Um, Oh, now just balancing these notes is a little awkward. This is made out of entirely hand-spun alpaca by me. I think all the alpaca is also local because we have a lot of alpaca farms in Connecticut. It's a thing. So here is the finished object. It is not blocked because alpaca doesn't have the same kind of memory characteristics as wool does. So honestly, it's just going to even out the stitches, but this is early hand-spun alpaca. The stitches are never going to look very even at all, so I'm not fussed about it. Um, this pattern is meant for sort of a cowl around this length. I think I ended up doubling the stitches so that I can do this and kind of have a lot of cowl up near my neck um, for warmth, because that's what cowls are for. Um, I did not end up using all of my hand-spun alpaca. I have a ton of it left. I will probably make another cowl, uh, because hand, uh, alpaca is tricky since it doesn't have that memory, and this is 100% alpaca. Um, so there's not a ton of things that I like to make, like hats or sweaters or socks that I can make with it because it just does not retain shape. So kind of cowls and shawls are my go-to. So I'll probably make another cowl out of alpaca uh, because I'm not one of those people who finds alpaca to be itchy. Uh, sometimes if it's soft enough I can't even feel it. So having that up at some of the most sensitive skin is good. So that's completed, and I'm very pleased with that. I've also finished some hand spun. Um, did I mention it last time on the podcast? I don't recall. I know I've mentioned it on Instagram, but what I like to do when I'm spinning on my Ashford 2 Kiwi wheel, and also now my electric eel nano, is I like to fill up all of the bobbins, as many bobbins as is physically possible and then just ply for like four months. So I've finished the oldest hand spun of the bunch. It is the yarn for my brown Cormo sweater. These are the two skeins that I finished uh, over the past month or so which brings my grand total up to five of these monsters. I have not counted the yardage um, or anything for these two that I finished two weeks ago, last week, yes. Um, but it is a thick yarn, it is a three-ply yarn. Um, it was all spun on my Ashford Kiwi 2 my notes have fallen asleep. It wouldn't be a show without the notes falling asleep. Um, I am likely going to do a cabled sweater with this yarn, which is why I'm just kind of focused on picking the pattern for it this year. 
Um, and this hand spun I started, I think back in 2017. It was a while ago. So all of the hand spun Cuomo is complete, which is very exciting. Um, yes, now I have so much Cuomo to deal with on the floor here. It's a very uh, bouncy, springy yarn. That's not going to work. I'm wearing a watch. Let's just loosely skein that up. Just so it doesn't get caught on everything I'm going to be throwing over there. And then I finished one other hand spun at this stage in the game. And that is my Classy Squid Fiber Company, because I love Classy Squid Fiber Company. Uh, cuttlefish. This is a... The cuttlefish bats are kind of everything and the kitchen sink bats. Um, I think it was just for four ounces. Um, very colorful. Lots of texture. This is a two-ply yarn uh, spun completely on the Ashford Kiwi 2 wheel. Um, any other details? Not really. It hasn't been washed and set or anything yet, but um, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. It's just going to end up in my classy squid hoard for now, and I will figure it out at some point. That's it for finished objects. Um, oh, my watch has come slightly undone. Works in progress. I have news in works in progress. I have to retrieve that bag. This bag, the Lion Brand Company tote bag. Excuse me, show notes, you're in the way now. Try to get that to balance on my leg. Nope. Okay. Sn smacking into the tripod now. There we go. Buh. So I, in this bag, for many years now, has been my Cozy Memories blanket. I'm using the Memory Blanket pattern by Georgie Nicholson, which is a free pattern. I'm using a US 1 2.25 millimeter needle. Uh, it's fingering weight scraps. This is the long side that you have seen before. Here's a new square. And then I have been making a concerted effort throughout December and the first half of January to sort of square up the shorter side of this blanket. Um, So I did end up going up about four squares from where I was, and then I have been anywhere you see a progress keeper is a new square. Uh, I've nearly finished my advent calendar from this year, so that's exciting. And it's starting to look like it might someday be a blanket, which is Supremely exciting. Um, yes. Do I have anything more to say about it? Not really. Um, I've also been trying to periodically stop and weave in a bunch of ends. So there's not a ton of ends on the backside, just kind of where I've been recently knitting, which is good. Progress. I am currently at 42% complete, uh, so a little more than 20% by the end of 2020, and I will have achieved that goal, which is good. I've also been working on my pinwheel scrap squares 
This is the Pinwheel Scrap Blanket Pattern by Mina Phillip. I currently carry them around in this little Star Wars bag that I made a million years ago. These are destined to become siege covers in my car uh, for the front two seats. And this is the one that was finished before and I've woven in all the ends. And I finished a second square. I still need to weave in ends, but this is the second square. I discovered that my sequence, sequence of light and dark is opposite on these squares. So now I'm just going to have one seat go dark, light, dark, light, and the other seat go light, dark, light, dark. So I am on this square, nearly done with the second triangle, and it's kind of chucking along whenever I need something super mindless. Um, these two squares will probably stay in this tiny bag for a while. Um, what I do is I pick eight mini skeins and put them in this bag so I just have those mini skeins to choose from. Um, so I'll probably keep these two as the guides for what contrast sequence I need. Um, but then any other fitness squares are going to end up in a tote bag with the rest of the yarn scraps that I'm kind of pulling from right now. Um, I'm using a US 4 3.5 millimeter needle. I think I said that wrong on the last podcast. Oh well. Um, and I'm holding the fingering weight yarns double to use up more scraps and to provide a cushy seat cover for the car. I also started my City Limits sweater. Um, that's my Rhinebeck, one of my Rhinebeck sweaters. My definite Rhinebeck sweater. Um, this is a design by Samantha Guerin Designs. It is in this project bag that I wove for myself and then sewed into a bag. I am using size US 6 4.0 millimeter needles, which I believe is what the pattern calls for. My gauge is different from the pattern, but that's fine because my gauge is never on pattern. So I did add all my math and I figured out my size and everything. I am using primarily Classic Elite uh, Yarns Mountaintop Crestone in gray. This is a, I think it says a worsted weight on the tag, but it feels a little more like DK. The pattern calls for DK, um, but I'm never on gauge anyway, so I don't even care. But I do know that I don't have enough yarn for a full length and long sleeve sweater. So, I don't know how far this yarn is going to take me. If it takes me to a full length three quarter sleeve sweater, that's fine. If I require more yarn than that, I have plenty of time to panic about it and then find a contrasting color to do like the bottom half of the sleeves or something. That's why I'm starting it so early. And my notes have fallen asleep again. Uh, and this is how far I have gotten. This does not quite look like the sweater in the pattern. The sweater in the pattern has this kind of patterned ribbing for about half-ish of the body length um, and the style of it it's a boxy type sweater 
but the where the patterning kind of cuts off is at the narrowest point of the person, uh, at least in the sample photos, so that it gives the illusion of shape without any shaping, uh, which to my eye is more of a femme presenting style of garment. So what I did was I shortened the patterned ribbing um, so that there's only two rows before the chart, the chart, and then three rows after the chart. It's considerably longer in the pattern. And I have just started the first row of plain stockinette. Um, so this sort of fancy ribbing, while longer than a normal sort of waistband on a sweater, is just going to function for me as a longer waistband on a sweater. Um, I will be comparing the length of it to my hand spun sweater because I really love the length of that hand spun sweater. Um, so this is just kind of going to be around the hips and not the full bottom half of the sweater cutting me at the midpoint. That's my attempt to kind of make this pattern a little more masculine. We'll see if it works. Does it really matter? No. But, um, but that kind of opens up some possibilities if more masculine presenting people um, would like to make a version of this sweater, since it's otherwise a very simply designed sweater. Most the, the top of the sweater is all stockinette, the sleeves are reverse stockinette and ribbing. Um, you can tell that from the pattern photos. So it's otherwise a very simple sweater, um, which kind of lends itself to masculine presenting because society says masculine presenting people don't like fancy sweater or something. I don't know. Society's weird and gender is nonsense. Um, but I wanted to try to kind of shift the pattern so that it didn't cut me at a narrow way, narrow point in my body so that it didn't give the illusion of the waistline. Um, so it's more going to be like a fancy ribbing at the hips. Probably too much explanation to just say that I cut out a bunch of rows of fancy ribbing. Eh. Eh. I don't know. So, gotta shift again. Okay. So, I'm now at uh, easy peasy land where I just stock a net for goddamn ever. Um, I should note that I do have an idea for a contrasting yarn for this sweater. Should I need it? I'm not sure. Um, this yarn was gifted to me. It's, um, over dyed yarn. It's a similar weight. This on the sleeves might be interesting. It's an idea. Like just the ribbing on the sleeves. I don't know. It's looking a little pink on camera. But that's why I've started this sweater in January for Rhinebeck in October. So that when I hit that roadblock and I panic about making choices, I've got months to do it. Uh, so that's the City Limits sweater by Samantha Garrett Designs as seen on the Grocery Girls podcast last October. And my notes have fallen asleep again. I gotta change these settings. Uh, the Redford sweater. 
<laughs> last year's make nine. I've made considerable progress because I did take a weekend a few weeks ago to just knock out a bunch of pieces. So what I did have was the back piece. Uh, this is all in Green Mountain Spinnery. Uh, Lana in the Grease colorway. Gray. I don't know if I say the word grease with enough of an accent to tell that I'm not just saying grease like bacon grease and the word gray. <laughs> Instead of the word gray, my sentences are not coherent. Okay, um, it's fingering weight yarn. I'm knitting this on my LK150. So here's the back piece that has been done for ages. Enough that there is now a crease <laughs> because it's been folded up in a basket. Um, so, I knocked out on the machine in, over the course of one weekend, the front piece, um, which, there is supposed to be some shaping here, like a decrease visible shaping, but the way I do my increases and decreases on the machine didn't show up. So you can see it kind of on the back side. But, um, not really on the front side. Oh well. So, if slash when I make the sweater again on the machine, I'll just not bother to do the fancy part. And I finished both sleeves. So there's one sleeve, and there's the second sleeve. Now this sweater also has two kind of skinny side panels that go kind of under the arm that I have not done yet. I wanted to make sure I had as much of my yarn caked up as possible because I'm looking at possibly playing some yarn chicken on the knitting machine, so. Um, but I don't think I'm really going to get back into this project until I finished sewing things for Gabby's wedding because that's coming up sooner than I think it's going to. So this sweater can wait. Those items cannot. Um, my current spinning plying uh, is the House Organa battling things uh, that I spun the singles on my uh, electric eel nano. It's a two ply. I'm now plying it on my Ashford Kiwi. And then for sewing, I have in progress the vest for Gabby's wedding. So let me get my fabrics. So the exterior fabric of the vest is a light gray cotton. Um, this is one of her wedding colors. And the fronts of the vest have a lace overlay in this flower dark reddish wine lace which is another one of her wedding colors it will be lined with this black cotton lining it will have They're fake, but kind of pearl buttons. Uh, I did end up buying new buttons. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen my story where I was conflicted about the buttons for this vest. I ended up buying buttons that had just the pearl bit without a sort of metal setting on them um, because the ones that I had uh, previously were gold and the hardware that I got is kind of a gunmetal gray um, for the little sort of belt that goes at the back of a men's vet man's vest. Um, and to show you, because I'm not bringing the vest pieces up here because they are full of long pins at the moment. So to get an idea of what this vest will look like, Here's my test sample. These are swatches from fabric.com. Um, 
so it'll be the gray with the lace overlay. I'm in the process of pad stitching the lace to the fronts so that it does not shift at any point in the construction of this garment. This is an unrelated piece of fabric. It is there because I was testing my sewing machine with sewing over the lace and what settings I needed for that. But that is what the front of the vest will look like. I'm using uh, Simplicity 4762, which is um, a men and boys vest pattern. Um, there's four styles of vests for both adults and children, uh, and some ties, but I'm not making a tie, because I don't wear ties. They are uncomfortable. Um, Yes, I did end up having to make two mock-ups because this pattern, if any of you are making this pattern ever, is meant for people with the figure of Captain America. <laughs> Dorito shaped. Um, the size medium fit me perfectly in the sort of chest, right where that first button goes, chest width, the, with the shoulder placement, the length of the sweater for my short torso, because I do have a short torso. Um, but I ended up in my second, in, in my mock-up having to add around seven inches around like the widest part of me. That's a lot of inches to add to a pattern. Um, for my second mock-up, I ended up taking in a second dart because it was maybe five, like three quarters of an inch uh, to an inch too big on either side. It was hanging funny in the front, so I ended up putting a second dart uh, next to the dart that's already in the pattern. Um, but the mock-up was mom approved for fit, <laughs> so... I'm working on the actual fashion fabric now. Pad stitching that lace is going slowly. I'm not great at it, but um, it's going. And the only other work in progress I have to show real quick, where did it end up? is a project that I ended up working on around New Year's because I was sick with a sinus infection that kind of kicked me in the face. Uh, and I didn't have the energy or the patience to do much of anything, but I was so bored that I started on uh, this going gnome kit that I bought in 2018. This is for the tree gnome, who looks like that. And I have currently a brown cone. Uh, I do need to kind of smooth this cone out and kind of dense it in a bit um, because I like my needle felting projects quite dense. Um, but it is in progress. And not that exciting, and you probably won't see this again until it's done, but I wanted to mention that I was working on it. And that's it for all, for all the crafty content. I do have some other stuff. Excuse you, notes. Refreshing again. Back down to other stuff. Other stuff stuff that I am watching. Uh, because Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker came out in December and it tickled things I liked about Star Wars in my brain, I decided to immerse myself in the month of December in Star Wars brain-tickling content, uh, which included video game walkthroughs of Star Wars games, because Dark side shenanigans are the best in the video games, um, which is what dark side shenanigans in The Rise of Skywalker reminded me of, which is why I was cackling at people in the theaters 
who were scoffing uh, judgmentally about how extra everything was. Um, you ain't seen nothing till you've played or watched a Star Wars video game. Them Sith are the most extra. So I watched, uh, I say watched. I didn't sit down and put my eyes on it constantly. I was doing a lot of crafting while I was watching these at the same time. Uh, so I went through The Force Unleashed, The Force Unleashed 2, which was very strange because I knew the whole story and have never played those games before. So I don't know if I just osmosis them by being a ridiculous Star Wars fan content absorber, or if I watched playthroughs of those games before, but I don't know. And I also made it through... I don't remember if I watched the very end, which is the part that I always forget in Knights of the Old Republic, but I did watch a considerable amount of Knights of the Old Republic gameplay because Knights of the Old Republic and Knights of the Old Republic 2 are my favorite games for Star Wars because they're redonkulous. There's amnesia, there's Mandalorians with awkward accents because they're American accents <laughs> in Judgmental AF. There are droids who want to murder your face. It's a delightful time. Um, so I was doing that. I may have watched some other ones, but I don't recall. I also started watching as a kind of turn off my brain and just look at the pretty pictures. Um, show, I've started watching Versailles on Netflix because it is probably 50% drama, 50% elaborate costuming Frenchness. But everybody's got a UK accent, even though they're supposed to be French. I literally have no idea what's even happening in this show. I just watch upset people walk through hallways in astounding costuming in recreations of the Palace of Versailles. That's what that show is. I've slept through a considerable amount of it. Uh, I also started rewatching Clone Wars because Clone Wars returns for a final season in February. It is February. 20 days. I'm excited about it. Um, and I also started watching on Netflix The Witcher because Tumblr was talking about The Witcher. Have I really been paying attention to that show? Probably not. My brain's not really paying attention to television right now. Uh, the things my brain is paying attention to is audio, so stuff I'm listening to is a very long list right now. I'm finally catching up on podcasts that my brain decided it did not want to pay attention to back in the beginning of October. A lot of the more current event podcasts, I just marked everything red and I'm starting fresh as new episodes come out. Um, but things that I have caught up on, here's a list of them just because I haven't talked about podcasts on this podcast for a very long time. These are all audio only. I have no idea what I've caught up on for video because Vlogmas was a thing, so this is audio only. The podcasts I have been listening to in 2020 to catch up. The Magnus Archives, the H.P. Lovecraft Literary Podcast, Welcome to Night Vale, Wooden Overcoats to the series of shorts, um, in the Break Between Seasons, uh, The White Vault, Inside Trader Joe's, Potterless, My Favorite Murder, All My Relations, Within the Wires, Tarot Bites and Astrology Bites, 
Métis in Space, Spooked, The Fat Feminist Witch, and The Good Ancestor Podcast. Links to all these things are in the show notes, should you care to check them out for yourself. I also fell down rather abruptly into a holly black rabbit hole. Uh, this is because I was listening to A Court of Whatever the Second One Was by Sarah J. Maas. Um, <laughs> that one that Gabby from Once Upon a Corgi and Kristen from Bull and Vine Yarns is obsessed with that series. Listening to the second one, which is an improvement over the first one, I just kept thinking of the things that I like about, specifically, Holly Black Fay writing that was not being addressed in Sarah J. Moss's Fay writing. So I went, hmm, Holly Black, maybe I should reread some Holly Black books. And I went to Googling and found entire series by Holly Black that I did not know existed. So I had a couple of 50% off membership things to use up for audiobooks now. So uh, I went through, um, I talked about The Cruel Prince in my last podcast, and then finished that series with The Wicked King, narrated by Caitlin Kelly, The Queen of Nothing, narrated by Caitlin Kelly, and then found out that the books that I already own in paperback are... Are they in paperback? Some of them are hardcover. Doesn't matter. They were relatively inexpensive, and with my membership discount on audiobooks now, were less than $10 for me to buy. So I bought the audiobooks of Tithe by Holly Black, narrated by Kate Rudd, uh, Valiant by Holly Black, narrated by Renee Roudman, Ironside by Holly Black, narrated by Kate Rudd. And it was a struggle not to buy more Holly Black books immediately. I need to budget that money. <laughs> Don't buy all the books at once when you have 50% off discounts coming up around the next billing cycle. Um, but then I also did get an another audiobook from Audiobooks Now, um, because it was less than five dollars. Uh, the Near Witch by V. E. Schwab, narrated by Heather Wilde. I'm currently in the process of listening to that one, which is witchy, not necessarily fae. But I don't know yet. I'm not that far into it. Oh, my entire leg is asleep. Goodness. Ugh. My all the little gods. That's uncomfortable. Uh, and then stuff I'm reading, I read a huge chunk of Tipping the Velvet by Sarah Waters. I am trying to get into a practice of reading at least a few nights a week out of the actual physical books that I own, because I have so many that I need to read. Um, but I tend to read them kind of in massive chunks. So last Saturday, I read probably two-thirds of the book on a Saturday morning. So I'm just loving that book so much. It's a delight. And that's going to do it for other stuff in this podcast. I'm starving, so I'm going to wrap it up here and go eat some lunch. Show notes and transcripts and everything can be found over at freakishlemon.com. Wake up, leg. Oh, pins and needles. Hello. Um, you can join the group on Ravelry. Just search Freakish Lemon in the groups tab and you will find us. Uh, you can follow me as Freakish Lemon on Instagram and Ravelry. The links to all these things will be in the down bar here on YouTube or somewhere around here if you're watching this somewhere else. And if you are here on YouTube and you want to know when my next video will be live, 
consider hitting that little subscribe button or that notification bell and that notification bell. I don't have that turned on, so I don't know how it works. I, you do you. Uh, and that's gonna do it for me. I need to get blood recirculating into my lower extremities, so I'm gonna go. Goodbye.